Hello everyone, this video will be about this 3D printed adapter that allow you to mount friction shifters onto your brake levers. If you're watching this, you probably already know what this is about and what it's for already, so I won't go into too much detail explaining it. But this is a great way to keep the simplicity of friction shifting with more modern ergonomics and without spending a lot of money. You can watch this video where I use these adapters in a cheap bike build-off challenge, where the goal is to build a bike for less than 120 pounds. And this was a great way to keep the budget down while having a more modern feeling bike. First of all, this adapter is a 3D model that I modified from a Belgian bike frame building company called Hoofla. They released an open source model that I found on printables, including the Fusion 360 file, which saved me a ton of time remeasuring everything and building it from scratch. Luckily, their model kind of worked with the friction shifters that I ended up having. And so maybe this is a very common standard that would be good for a lot of old vintage bikes. So anyways, I'm releasing this model as a remix of the Hoofla shifters on printables and elsewhere. I'll talk a bit about shifter compatibility, at least as far as my limited understanding of it goes as a non-professional home mechanic. My understanding is that stem mounted friction shifters have the shifter cable hose retaining section or whatever you call it, whereas down tube friction shifters do not have the shift cable hose retainer. And you'll see that I named the models differently, so you can choose which one works for you. The difference between the models is that one has the shifter hose retaining section and the other one doesn't. So yeah, if you have the stem mount, uh, you might not need that uh, shifter hose retainer, so choose that model. In the Fusion 360 model, you also see that the square shape that determines the orientation of the shifter can be easily modified so that the shift cables come out in the direction that you want. So for example, if you wanted to, the shift cables to point up instead of sideways, then you can kind of change the orientation of that square, and that should be able to make it work whichever way you want. From what I can tell, a lot of these friction shifters also use the same square uh, retaining block thing. So I think this should be compatible with a lot of friction shifters, but if it does need to be changed, again, the Fusion 360 model is quite easy to modify to change the shape to something that works for you. The other tricky part would be to modify the, this curve in the adapter to fit the brake levers that you have. The best thing to do is probably to take a top-down picture of the brake lever and try to replicate that curve in the Fusion 360. And the good thing about TPU is that uh, if the curve is not exact, when you tighten the screws, it will push the adapter into the brake lever so it'll kind of form itself around it. So let's take a closer look at the adapters themselves and how it fits onto the bike. Apologies for the color of the filament. It's the one that I had and yeah, it shows up pretty poorly on camera, unfortunately. Okay, so this is the printed part off the build plate. This is what it looks like after I remove the uh, support. So it comes off pretty easy in one piece and uh, you can just kind of snip these little bits here and that will clean it up because uh, it's not that important. Actually, a bit of roughness here adds more friction for the friction shifter. And yeah, this is the 64D TPU, so you can see the flex here. Uh, after a while, it will kind of rest into this position with all the cable tension constantly on it. But um, yeah, it really doesn't affect the shifting too much when it's kind of stuck in this position. So that's the good thing about this uh, index list friction shifting. But as is, this is perfectly serviceable and the parts are like indestructible like you cannot rip this apart from any normal uh biking wear and tear so yep these are the mounting holes for the adapter itself you don't have to measure anything you can just use the adapter as a template uh, when you're drilling and then it'll kind of work out perfectly so yeah the upper hole is m5 and then the lower hole is m3 and if you Google, um, you'll see the specs for uh, what drill size you need for the proper tap. Actually, I'll just kind of put them up on the screen here. Um, yeah. And then like any tap set uh, will pretty much uh, work for these brake, these type of brake levers because the brake levers are just usually an aluminum alloy and it's pretty soft compared to any regular steel tap. So it's quite easy to do. 
And I'll just play a couple of clips here of when I was installing the prototype of these brake levers because the process is kind of similar where you're just kind of drilling a hole and then tapping it. And if you want to see this whole sequence uh, in a bit more detail, it is in that other video I mentioned before about the cheap bike build off challenge. I played more of it there. And definitely don't do what I've been doing here by not using a vise to clamp it. Uh, it's quite dangerous if it slips. So I'm tapping the holes now. And remember that this is a prototype where I did two M3 holes uh, instead of one M3 and one M5. So just kind of ignore that. But the tapping procedure is uh, similar. Just lubricate the holes and then put the tap through slowly uh, and steadily. And after you finish tapping, you pretty much just uh, mount the adapter on and just adjust the tightness of the bolt so that it keeps the lever in place with the with the tension in the shifter cable and also add a bit of Loctite to the bolts. It works. Stays in place. For the uh, down tube uh, caps, you can print ones that allow you to put in the cable adjuster, but this this is just a super basic one. And it's, it's worked fine because you can just adjust the stops and the cable um, on the derailleur itself. And that's pretty much sufficient um, to make sure that it shifts correctly. Yeah, and the rear derailleur has a uh, cable adjuster already, so. And just so you know, since these are a remix of the Hoofla shifters, they share the same licensing um, for the model. So Hoofla released this model under Creative Commons, Attribution, Non-Commercial, Share Alike which means that uh, I can't sell this model. And that wasn't the intention anyways, it was mainly just to make use of old parts on this uh, bike. Hoofla themselves released the original model under Creative Commons so that more people can tinker and modify and reuse old parts. So I think that's commendable and something that I want to encourage as well with the, this easier to use uh, model. But if there is enough interest from bike mechanics and bike tinkerers who don't have access to a 3D printer, I can remake this entire model from scratch and then that way I can sell these parts. It would probably be about 20 pounds per set and I can offer customization uh, to fit different brake levers and uh, shifters as needed. But as is, I don't think the license will allow me to charge to print and send these to people. It's kind of a weird situation where if you gave this model to someone local to print for you and they just charge you essentially for machine time and material, I don't think that violates the license. So if you don't have a printer, I recommend you find someone local to see if they can accommodate you with respect to the material and just run this off for you. Hopefully it won't cost too much. If you want to thank me for creating this model and releasing it, just uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel and that'll be good. And if you want me to release a version for sale, just let me know in the comments below. Maybe if I get like five comments requesting it, I'll, I'll do that. Thanks.